Okay, okay. Tyler Williams from Legion of Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us ahead of professional crit nets. You are yeah. getting ready to uh, to go for a bike ride. Let's talk about Tulsa Tough. You play second overall, first on Crybaby Hill. The team was dominant, controlling the race throughout. Um, take us through the, the tactics and how you guys came together to decide to ride at the front the entirety of the race um, throughout Tulsa. Yeah, so I don't think that that's originally how we had planned to do it. Um, <clears throat> that was never going to be, we didn't go into the season knowing that that was going to be the plan either. Um, after DC, which I wasn't at in armed forces, uh, but I was listening and kind of like trying to follow it as best I could. And then talking to the guys afterward, um, we just saw that what was happening there wasn't going to work for us. The, the approach was, was wrong. Um, and the strength of the team is as a collective. So if, if our rivals can then pull out two of us, it's better for them. But when we're six of us together, that's how we knew we were going to be give ourselves the best opportunity to, um, yeah, just dictate the race and control our own destiny. So that was kind of how we ended up then controlling Tulsa was <clears throat> on night one, we got to the front and we got to the front, like probably three laps in, two laps in. And it was probably just me and Sam uh, on a, on like a telepathy level, not even talking to each other. Just like, we're just like, well, we're going to start riding now and three laps in. And then, Alec got there and Ty was there and we just, we committed to that way. And it wasn't the plan going into it. Um, to be completely honest, like that was, we hit the front 30 minutes earlier than we planned on. Um, but <clears throat> we had a lot of faith in the, the power and the strength on our team. And that was kind of, once we saw we could do it the first night um, on a personal level, I felt stronger every night. So like, I think the second night I rode the first 15 minutes alone on the front. And it just, for me, it helps me just get settled into the race a little better. Um, but it just all is about using our collective strength as a team. You guys have some big talent on this team. I mean, you're a former uh, pro continental level rider on cycling Academy world tour level experience. You've come through developmental pathways on world tour level teams like BMC. Is that to me, it seems like looking at you guys ride you are very comfortable riding at like 29 to 31 miles per hour for an hour. I mean, did mm -hmm. you feel in difficulty at, at through, throughout Tulsa tough at, at any point? No, uh, not really. I had so much, <clears throat> that was a special thing about it. And, in, in particularly on, on the, the Sunday uh, on Crybaby, we didn't even think twice. We had, so much confidence in each other to just do the job um there was no panic ever everyone was so locked in and i think we had a lot of confidence after the first two days that it was just kind of growing so yeah I, th I think we knew sam is such a huge engine alex a huge engine ty is so experienced that and i knew that i was riding fairly well so um i think between the four of us we knew we could that kind of like it would take a lot to get us on the back foot my colleague Michael Sheehan made the point when it came to Crybaby Hill, when it came to Crybaby Hill, that that ride, your ability to control that race, showed not only that you guys came very prepared to Tulsa Tough, that you'd been preparing an entire year for this race and and throughout 2020 and and the, the year without racing but also seemed to show that the rest of the field wasn't really on form or at the level they need to be to even, even compete. I mean, how did, did, I mean, is, does that seem uh, like a fair assessment to you? And not, not that, not to make you call out other riders, but there, there does seem to be a, a, a big disparity in terms of the, the fitness level at the moment. Yeah, I can't really speak on what everyone else, where everyone else is at. Um, I, in my role in the team, is kind of like to make sure that everyone is up to up to par with 
or on the standard that we need to be able to kind of do what we did and make sure that we have Justin and Corey's back to deliver them to the finish. Um, that's why I'm here. And that's why this whole situation evolved into what it was with my role on the team. So, I mean, I've definitely been harping on everyone to make sure that they're ready come June because we knew that everyone was going to be kind of gunning for us. Um, and I mean, I didn't expect it to go that well. Like that was a big job by the guys. And I was super proud because I don't think that in the smaller races that we had done to start the year, that wasn't kind of like the level that we had seen from our team either. So it was like everyone stepping up. We hadn't had those particular six guys together at any race yet. So that was kind of like also the first try of seeing how like the best lineup we could put together would, would look. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I can't speak on the level of everyone else, but I was definitely very impressed and just like motivated to see how prepared everyone else was in our team. And so you're on the front for like an hour. And, and like you said, you are personally pulling, you rode the first 15 minutes of night two at Tulsa by yourself. And then you're coming to the last five laps. The field is strung out and you're still accelerating on that last lap. I mean, to me, having done some of these races before, like where, where does that, I mean, you must know where you're at, that you still have gas in the tank. You still have mass matches to burn and, and you still have legs on, on the last lap to bring the pace, you know, from 30 to 35 or, or whatever it is mm -hmm. when you're accelerating on that last lap. I think Crybaby is, is a, is a, a prime example of the race you ended up winning. Um, I mean, you essentially were on the front the entirety of that last lap. Yeah, um, I like I can kind of so night one was night one was just kind of crazy. Uh, it was, that course is feels so fast, um, and then we ended up losing tie to a puncture with five laps to go. And again, that was just incredible because it was so loud um, with the fans that you actually we could really couldn't really talk to each other that much. So there was some shouting, and then everyone kind of understood. Okay, we don't have tie. So then, I mean, I have to give most of the credit there to Sam and Alec because they're the ones who adjusted their pools so that I could do my pool, which was then in turn Ty's pool. Um, and, and that wasn't something, that, again, that we had been executing that well through the early part of this year. But those two did such a great job of then, like, measuring their efforts to where I got delivered to where Ty was supposed to be. Um, and so we were able just to to adjust on the fly there and then yeah we can it's just all getting like night two was um we executed it so perfectly i think we dropped like five to seven seconds per lap for the last four laps so like if you looked at the breakdown we i think we did almost 30 seconds faster from four laps to one lap to go wow it was uh and that's how you know that's how it's that's the perfect execution and Justin is so big because Justin, I mean, it's no shocker that Justin's not like the biggest like power guy in the world as far as like endurance power. He's a, he's a pure, pure, pure sprinter. So he's always yelling at us to slow down and ride the course correctly. And I think that that's what we did so well. And that's why we were able to ride the front and go as fast as we were is, is not necessarily about just riding as hard as you can all the time, but riding hard in the moments you need to ride hard and riding easier when you can and that's why we still have gas in the tank at the end of each day. Um, now I have to ask you about this because on night two, when I saw Justin uh, dropping off of last, last wheel on the train, sort of the sweeper position, I thought that he looked pretty, pretty smoked, like he was done. Yeah. He ended up coming back and finishing fourth. Um, there's been a phrase going around. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, this term from back in the day, the Saturn sit up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I haven't heard this about, about, um, about that race yet. No, but um, I've heard of the Saturn sit up. So full disclosure, that was not in the plan. Um, Justin afterward told me that he basically was on, on the, 
on the limit. And I think that you can see by the guys in his wheel, like I'm pretty sure Sam Bassetti was in his wheel. Sam Bassetti is one of the best riders in the country. And Sam Bassetti also let the wheel go. So if anyone's mad about the Saturn setup, they can blame Ty Magner because he's the one who just absolutely lit the rockets uh, going up that hill. And that hill was, it was not easy and it was hot that day. I think that, um, and Sam and Alec again did such like impressive turns. Everyone was already stuck by the time Alec or by the time Ty accelerated. So Justin um, just kept from going fully into the red where he locked up. And I mean, it wasn't like anyone, no one could close, close the gap back. So I think everyone was pretty much on the, on the limit there. It was just Justin who was in the position to, yeah, he had three guys in front of him. Yeah. And then uh, another element of Tulsa, um, which I found just really moving and I think is one of the fascinating things about Legion of Los Angeles, why, you know, you guys are getting attention not only from outlets like Flow Bikes, but, you know, Wall Street Journal, New York Times is you've elevated bike racing to our conversation, our pop culture conversation. And you certainly did that at Tulsa, you know, highlighting the race riots in Tulsa 100 years ago, uh, Black Wall Street, New War, Greenwood Avenue patches on your on your jerseys to <clears throat> to highlight the, the atrocity that that occurred there. What does it mean to you personally to be a part of a team that's kind of more of a bike racing team that's that's a movement that's opening people's eyes um, about racial inequities, not only in bike racing, systemic racism, but within our country, within our world. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of learning um, being a part of it. And I just try to listen as much as I can, because obviously I'm not a voice that necessarily people want to hear from when it regard in regards to um that topic i let justin and Corey do the talking because they're just they're the voice of it as far as cycling goes um i just try and listen and support them as best i can uh as far as the being involved with uh, greenwood ave and and seeing that i think that that was it was really it was moving because obviously this is the first black owned professional cycling team and how popular and how um beyond popularity, just how successful it's becoming, I think as a perfect um, overlap to then go to Greenwood Ave where all these very successful black business owners once existed. Um, and then also learning about, yeah, the, the tragedy that happened there a hundred years ago um, that I honestly didn't have much background knowledge going into that. So just learning as much as I can. And obviously I think the, as a, as a white person with, within this team, um, just all we can do is try to learn and understand and try to keep these mistakes from ever happening again. So being able to bring that um, terrible, you know, tragedy into the public eye and be like, look, this is, this is what these guys have dealt with. And uh, you know, now seeing Justin and Corey right hopefully begin to right those wrongs and I'm just gonna you know stand stand beside them and boost them up as best I can because that's that's my role that I can I can provide cool all right <clears throat> last question and uh it's it's a little bit lighter than the previous one but also um, uh, a hard question this is this is the hardball part of the interview we need to get into hashtag crit beef because mm -hmm. this went down on social media a, a, a months ago um you know started with uh justin and travis mccabe getting into it on on social media uh debate about the the national championship jersey pro versus amateur and that's one thing that i i do love about what legion and and justin and Corey are doing is um you know the online trash talking the um the rivalries that are being developed in the scene and then you know you're seeing that play out on the course everybody's bringing their a game what was interesting about tulsa is we did see it 
get a, get unnecessarily physical. Um, it did appear at points that there was a little bit of uh, bad bad blood, um, like Corey and an Elevate rider getting into it at one point. I guess the question, it, but at the same time, also we saw Travis and 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 Justin hugging it out on on the start line on on Friday and and smiling and 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 joking around. How how much of this sort of trash talking component of the crit scene right now is all in good fun and how much of it does get personal actually motivates you and and other riders to to raise their game to to ride at their highest level um i think that it's kind of taking a life of its own and i think it is healthy for our sport so I'm kind of, I'm kind of all about it. Um, I love it. I'm not, that's not my style necessarily, but I definitely have a mental list of people that I enjoy beating more than others. So, and I mean, and just like, for instance, like Sam Bassetti and I, like we live in the same place. We are neighbors for ages and we definitely love beating up on each other. So like, he's a list of, I don't have any ill feelings against him, but I definitely love beating him. Um, just so that when, when I'm home, I can, I can trash talk. It's all, it's all for good and fun. Um, I think the crit beef thing, I, I, Travis is a really great bike rider. Like I, I don't understand necessarily what, I mean, I've been in his shoes, right. I've come back from Europe and just kind of felt maybe underappreciated for how hard it is there. So I can, I can empathize with that perspective a hundred percent, but, um, just uh yeah it, the funny thing is no one talks to me no one talks to ty no one talks to alec and no one talks to sam all that beef is at justin and Corey. for sure they definitely bring a little bit of it on themselves i'm not gonna i mean they definitely they do it their own way and they're more vocal but there's a lot of even during the race there's a lot of uh you know that stuff that happens during the race that you may have seen some of it on the on cameras and things like that, that that stuff doesn't really happen with the rest of us. So they have a target on their back. And therefore I think because we have Justin and Corey's back, we have target on our back as well. Um, as far as like the, maybe more like controversial things that happen during the race. I think that there was frustration because we're, it wasn't like our plan was a secret or what we were doing was a secret and, or dirty or any tactics like the Saturn sit up or anything else that you want to like throw at it. Like that was not the plan. That was not what was happening. Um, there was nothing even a little remotely gray area about what we were doing. We were going to ride the front. That was the plan from, for definitely from night two and three on, that was what we were doing. So all we wanted was just the respect to just let us do our thing and you guys do your thing. And people were like, well, let us attack. And it's like, okay, but you have to clear the train before the next corner and don't dive bomb underneath of us. And I think that was what we were getting upset about. And Justin and Corey, if there's any aggression that's happening, it's because those dudes are having our backs as far as they know what we're doing up there. And they just don't want us having to deal with BS uh, like that. So, and I mean, yeah, it got all friendly at the end. Like Travis was giving Justin a hug or whatever. And that's all good. Like, you know, I could take or leave that. Like, if you want to talk on the internet, then, then be the same in person. That's all I really care about. Like, if you want to talk shit, talk shit. But if you want to be cool, then just be cool all the time. Like, and we'll, we'll race hard and it's what it is. But it's kind of like whole back and forth. Like, oh, like now we're friends. No, we're not. Now we're friends. Just be, just you don't know, do you. And Justin and Corey are going to be how they are. You, you won't make meet two nicer people. Um, you know, they're the most loyal people I've ever encountered in cycling. So, uh, and just good hearted. So, you know, but when it comes time to, to race, they're also two savages. So that's what we, that's what we want. And that's how that whole attitude does stem through the team. You see it with the girls too. Everyone, I think on the team has some sort of chip on their shoulder that they, they, uh, you know, harness that energy from, you see how the girls race, they have, they have pretty big attitudes as well, which, I mean, it's awesome to see those two, like very, just almost quiet seeming, um, girls, but man, they're, they're pretty nasty when they're out there on the bike and, and, you know, I'm pretty soft-spoken, quiet guy, but I have my reasons that I kind of like to get after it too. So it's just, everyone just kind of delivers it differently. Yeah. I, I do want to give a shout out to, uh, 
Skylar Schneider, that was my favorite moment of Tulsa Tough. Wasn't really caught on camera, but zipping her jersey up the last time up Crybaby Hill and then winning the bike race was was, was pretty baller. <laughs> it's just like, wait, I saw her come over the hill with her jersey on zip. Now she's winning fully zip. Um, yeah. So, uh, okay, um, actually last thing, softball question. A couple of years ago, um, you know, Justin won a couple of races at Tulsa, had a good time. Did you guys take Monday off? Were, were you at the Sound Pony or, or is that not, are you guys professionals now? You got to bed early, got ready for pro nationals. Ooh, I didn't go to bed early. Um, <laughs> no, we had a good time uh, Sunday night. Um, we were at a Waffle House pretty early in the morning, Monday morning. But I actually, that was kind of one thing that I don't think I would have done in my previous teams. Um, but, you know, you have to enjoy those successes um, as a team. So we definitely we did um, probably more responsibly than other teams I've seen in the past. But, uh, you know, we definitely all spent, we had a spent time together and enjoyed it. And I was you know, my deal with myself was Monday morning is back to back to work because I have a big week this week. So, um, yeah, I was on a plane. I was uh, going ahead to the airport at 7 a.m. Monday morning. So that's what I'm at They're They're on their way now driving. Um, but yeah, no, of course, I'd have a little fun. Cool. Well, thanks for joining us, Tyler, and good luck at uh, Pro Nationals Criterium uh, time trial and road race this weekend. Yeah, thank you.